so we back with another topic on the babies and parenting <laughs> so this time we're gonna talk about birth and uh, birthing process what uh, things we've been through both of us all three of us <laughs> all three of us yeah so it's episode three and a little introduction why we chose a uh, name when kids for the podcast oh, I, yeah. I think it's uh, one it. of the most askable questions yeah yeah for for for, for, for young couples overall yeah, yeah. Like all over kids? the world so when kids when kids are you having kids so maybe you're pregnant no you're getting you're getting old so when kids yeah. you know so and now matters. when we have one kid everyone asking is when so, the second. when the second one? Are you making second one, baby? You know, it's good to grow two small ones because they're yeah. friends and all that. We should good like, that you know that. <laughs> we should like reply, what's wrong with the first one? That we need the second one. Yeah. Yeah, like, what's wrong with this one? If, if everyone wants the second child so fast. Yeah. Uh, so where should we start? So I don't know, we should probably start from the moment when Ava's due date was. Her due date was at 24th of September. So she was two days late. Late, yeah. So I remember on 25th, yeah, on 25th I went to check, to get the checkup and they did, uh, I don't know how it's called in English, but they like, you know, check what's down there on the chair. To see if you dilated, if you're close, or they like just move around. I think, I think that's what happened. Like they move around a little bit, so it starts the process or something. I think that was like kickstarting our birth. Yeah, kind slowly. of thing to to move around stuff. I think there's a name for it. So if we find it, we're gonna put it. <laughs> and uh, I remember I got the checkup, and when I came home, I had a little blood, you know, afterwards. And they said that it's completely normal to have it and I kind of knew that at night it might start felt a little you know like mild mild cramps but they said it's normal after that checkup that it, it can happen and stuff <laughs> so basically I didn't think much of it but I kind of knew that it could happen any moment and then in the evening it was normal for me i was just cooking i made cookies and i was like awesome you know i just i, I literally lived my day just like a, usually. Another, another day just another day yeah and so two days go past and i'm going to tell like my perspective how it went till, till that moment, till that moment yeah it so i had two night shifts in a row I was expecting it uh, at the first night to get a call from Greta and that we're going to hospital. Yeah, because the 24th was the due date, like the, the date that yeah. she should come so, to our lives. So first night shift goes fast and uh, that day I didn't sleep. And the second night shift comes, so I was like 48 hours around without sleep yeah. by then. And it was like 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning? Yeah, I actually, I woke up at 3, pretty much like, you know, 3.00. Zero, zero. Yeah, so... <laughs> I remember I woke up, I had like cramps, just a little, a little... Ava, what's happening with you now? She never she's does this. She's little monkey today. Oh, okay. Where, where was I? <laughs> uh, so you okay. wake, wake I woke up. up. I woke up and I had like mild cramps and I didn't think much of it. It's, you know, it's kind of normal to have cramps overall in the like the last two months of pregnancy. It's normal to have those like, what is called like Braxton kicks or something, something like that. And I didn't think much of it. But then, you know, it cramps, it stops, it cramps again. And it just like kind of goes like periodic in that, in that kind of motion. And I just downloaded the, one of those tracking, birth tracking, con contraction tracking app to see like how oh. often I Yeah, you, you use the, an app yeah. to like follow it. 
and whenever I had cramp I just started, stopped whenever it stopped and just followed it through. So I knew if I need to call Thomas or not because I kind of knew like what is the start and when to like think about going to the hospital and, and it said in the app when to go to the hospital and stuff. Yeah, so on the app there was like a scale, like uh, each time you have to like uh, do a countdown for how long uh, the, how it's called, like the pain lasts. Oh yeah, like the cr contraction, how yeah, so long it How is. long it, the contraction lasts and by that scale you pretty much can like orientate yourself, so like about what is going to happen soon. Yeah, so... It wasn't that bad, it's like at the beginning of the menstruations, you know, when, when the period starts, kind of, it's kind of what it felt like, it wasn't like too much, it was just... <laughs> and like uh, for the men to understand, I think it could be like uh, used as a analogy, when you have a diarrhea for men and those like, how it's called, like belly cramps, and you have like bad stomach, I think it's pretty it's much similar. like that. It's yeah. similar. The start, it's similar to that because we also get the same thing when we have like upset stomach. <laughs> yeah. So you pretty much when you have, when you want to take a shit, when you have diarrhea, <laughs> oh it starts hurting, and then yeah. like goes away and then comes back. So I think this is pretty much what happened to you. I think. Yeah, yeah. I would say, I would say that it's pretty similar. So yeah, she's yeah. like. She's not sleeping around. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning and I didn't sleep ever since <laughs> she, she was birth. Yeah. So it was... <laughs> and I'm like working a night shift at my job and there was a, a failure... Uh, at work. At work for a... Imagine big washing machine but for sugar. And that thing broke down <laughs> and I, I got a call from the from like night shift boss that uh, that thing is broken and like I should come to try and fix it. I go down, there's like five or six people trying to fix that machine. We like digging one ton of sugar because that machine <laughs> broke down and it like uh, spilled the uh, brown sugar instead of white. And I feel that uh, my phone is like ringing at like four in the morning. Yeah, I, I waited for a whole hour because I knew it's not serious and I don't I shouldn't disturb him But then I thought that it's maybe good for him to come back to sleep at least few hours because I knew it's gonna last a little bit and The app said that my contra contractions are pretty like I don't know how like close enough from one another and I should go to the hospital so I was like, okay, I need to call him. Then we can drive to the hospital and see if we should stay or not. That's why I called him. Yes, so she calls me around four yeah, around in the morning and I instantly knew that it's Greta calling because... <laughs> no one else can call Yeah, no one else morning, can yeah, call yeah, me morning. because everyone who can, they are like next to me, you know, fixing the problem. <laughs> yeah. And my heart drops and I, I took the phone and I see the name that is Greta calling. I was like, oh my goodness. I like instantly uh, pick it up. And she was like, I think it's about time you should go home. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness. So I spent like three more minutes helping fixing the machine. Yeah, pretty much. And then I said that not to rush. I remember I, I told you that don't rush. I don't know, I, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> That, that it's kind of starting and I kind of need you home and we could go to the hospital. Yeah, so there was like 4 in the morning. I run back to my car. And I just fly back to the home. <laughs> across the city. I, man, I reached triple digits across the city with my car. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Glad you came back home safe. Yeah, I was just flying. Because I thought that we in a rush to go to the hospital. Oh, that's why. Yeah, like... Well, I mean, for me, you know, I don't know how intense it can be, the cramps. Like so, if she doesn't know how intense it can be, how I should supposed to know? Yeah. Like, and I did uh, research about pregnancy and birth a lot, but somehow I missed uh, the part that it's uh, not that fast, like they show in the movies. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, for some, for some women, it, it is like in the movies. For some women, uh, for example, my cousin's woman birthed in like four hours. No. Yeah, she started at 11 a.m. and ended at 3 p.m. So literally four or five hours. So yeah, I was just <laughs> like. So for some women, it's possible. I'm running across the like the uh, across the guard, and I see the guard sleeping. <laughs> like what the hell, man? <laughs> he was like sleeping at four in the morning, not looking at the cameras. I just go past the barrier. I jumped in my car. I flew flew back to my home, like crazy speeds. And she was like chilling on home. I, I thought I was eating banana. By the yeah, way, yeah, she was eating was bananas, like chilling at home. Cookies, you know, the, the ones that I baked. I was literally chilling at that point. I knew that he needed sleep, you know. So we well, need to come back. Yeah, sleep. There was no thought about sleep anymore. So yeah, I rushed back to the home. And she was just chilling here. Like, it's not that fast. So she took a shower. I took a shower, I think. Yeah, yeah, we both did. Because we didn't know if you're gonna stay at the hospital or not. Yeah. I didn't and know how, you know. We my ate body's like a couple bites. I, I don't remember what we ate. We ate bananas. Bananas? Both of us. Yeah. I just I like bananas. very quickly. And around 5, I think, we went to the hospital. Yeah, like 4 4.30 it was. 4 30. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the hospital. I actually like barely can remember what happened there. Well, yeah, like for the... It's so hard to remember now that I think of. Uh, I, I have only bits and pieces in my head that I can remember clearly and what not. And before uh, birth, I read that uh, women forget about uh, birth experience. And I didn't think it's real, but it is. It is real. She cannot remember anything. Even the checks, you know, I was not even in the birthing process. But I rem also like I barely remember what happened in the in the room in the checkup room when we arrive at uh, you know at the hospital. So I remember that the first time we arrived, they checked like <laughs> the doctor came literally uh, half asleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was sleeping. I mean, they work night night shifts. It's normal, I think, that people sleep at nights if there's no emergency. Because we. Wait, we came and we ring the bell. Yeah, 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 we ring the bell because no one was answering the door or anything. This yeah. was empty, you know, no one's there. You can literally go and do checkups yourself. <laughs> so that, that we ring the bell and the doctor came. The same doctor that did the checkup on Monday, on 25th, it was the same doctor that checked me, you know? So she was working the whole 24 hour shift, I guess, or whatever. And, um, she checked me up. She said that I'm, I'm not dilated much. I was at like, I think at three or something. It was like bare minimum of dilated. So and there was like, in human terms, the entire birth was not even close. No, it was not even close. Like, it was the the contractions were not bad. I could literally just, you know, feel it. But it was not like, oh my god, I can't stand it. So I showed the app that I, you know, had the contraction signed in and they're like, oh, you should have given a birth by now if that would be your contraction. So I was like, dude, am I lying to you? I remember this clearly because they said it in last, like, dude, seriously. Yeah, and for me, I'm sitting outside. In the waiting room. In the waiting room. <laughs> There's, there was no one in there yeah, at like yeah. five in the morning. I'm sitting waiting and I don't know what to expect. And yeah. then they say, you can go home. And if I want, I can stay at the hospital and they would just check on me or whatever. Or I could just sit at the hospital in the birthing room. Or I could go home and come back at like 10 a.m. in the morning, you know. So I was like, we go home because we, we live near the hospital. It's like, what, five minutes drive, yeah. I guess. So we came back home because I knew that Thomas needs to sleep. And there was nowhere to sleep in the hospital for him. So... I knew that we need that, so we went home. And Tom and I tried to rest as well. Thomas slept for yeah, sure. Yeah, I slept for a couple hours. For a couple hours. For like three, four-ish hours. Yeah. Because I didn't sleep for like 48 hours. Yeah. So yeah. I knew that... Uh, That's why I also thought that it would be a great idea to go home because I knew that Thomas needed sleep and I'm going to need him 
during the birthing process. <laughs> so Jesus, we're gonna Jesus talk Christ. about that too. That is, that is insane experience. And then uh, we came back home. I remember I laid in the in the bed, but I couldn't sleep. I like I closed my eyes and I tried to like rest as much as possible, but it was not really possible. Like you can feel the contractions. It's like it's like having pretty high period pain. Just not the highest you get. I get. I used to get, but like the one intense that you can't sleep. And I knew that it's it would be best to just like rest. And then once it's time, we're gonna go back home, back to the hospital. So I remember I woke up Thomas because he was still asleep. I waited till the last minute, pretty much, I think. And I woke up at like, I don't know, like 9.40, yes. I think. And we were just grabbed our bags, whatever was left, and went back to the hospital. I remember I ate another thing because I knew that it's gonna last for a bit. And I will not gonna be able to eat during the whole process in the hospital because it's not recommended yeah you i could throw up once pushing the baby and it's not really good or you good. can poop it on the baby well on the baby it's not not, really not possible, on the baby possible but, but you can poop yourself while yeah. giving birth because you're pushing like crazy yeah so yeah we went back and oh that 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 checkup that i had there it's it's i can barely remember but i remember a lot from it and it was yeah, not and the, the best though and the whole time i was waiting in like waiting room alone and i see the doctors going going in going away yeah. and uh, we only uh, chatted through the phone for like two hours yeah it's been like quite some time before they let me in yeah it was uh, the, i mean the whole checkup room is very private it's like gynecologist room with the yes. chair with the you know ultrasound machine and everything so it's quite you know a lot they did so now we're gonna talk about that and it was not the best experience for me I it's not comfortable <laughs> well the thing is they sit, set me up on the chair and it was my gynecologist at there at the at the hospital she works there and in another clinic so I was pretty happy to see her, but she didn't stay for a whole birthing process. And I remember she checked me first and she's like, oh, you dilated like four-ish. Four she, out of ten. Yeah, she asked me if, uh, what kind of dilation it was when I went in the morning. And I was like around two and a half, three, they said. And she's like, okay, so it's not much through like from four in the morning to ten. Didn't so go it's much. Very <laughs> slow progress for yeah, us at least for us. And but I could see that the pain is increasing yeah the pain definitely was bigger but it was not at the point where yet again like I needed like to scream or anything it was painful but not not crazy I could still talk you know they say that as far as you can talk the pain is like the pain is not that bad you know as far as you can talk and, and I could talk and that didn't last long trust me so basically what happened next, they put me on a chair, they checked and they asked me if my waters broke. My mucus plug was out, but when, when I came home, that, at that period of time from the last visit to the one Wait, that yes. he, my mucus was out. That, that plug, yeah, yeah, it did the, fell? Yeah, it did fell out. Uh, and you saw it in like... In the toilet, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that, it's, there's it's a plug like, in it. No, it's not like plug, it's just, I don't know, it's like white substance it's nothing covered. yeah but there's so many things that fell off from that place <laughs> during birth it's crazy actually and then when I went to the checkup there was blood like you know when you go on the chair there's like a little metal bowl where like if there's waters or oh, anything yeah. it collects it so um, there was blood and doctor was concerned because my waters didn't break and she asked if it broke at the home and I said no and she's like are you okay if we let your waters out and I'm like yeah if you needed to do that sure like if it doesn't you know do anything bad for the baby like why not and uh, she had like a little you know like it looked like that uh, when people knitting you know like the how it's called those knitting sticks yeah, yeah those sticks it's like plastic one, just very long, and they put you in and they try to like, you know, 
just like do a little. <laughs> At least that's what I remember. Just slice it through. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're not gonna hurt the baby. It's everything fine. It's normal. So you're not gonna even feel it. And they did it, and not much came out for some reason. Yeah. But it was blood there, and they were really concerned, like why there's blood. And she was like, she asked another doctor to come, probably, and and that was the doctor that, like, look for me, look out for me for the whole birthing process. It was very good doctor, by the way. I was, I would say I'm lucky. And mean, meanwhile, I'm just. Uh, waiting outside for those couple hours there. Yeah, it's nothing a long, happening. Long just time. so for the men, it's it's kind of annoying because you have no power there at it, all. But You're just you know what's funny? Just... There's like you just sitting on the chair with your legs spread open, <laughs> and the two doctors literally looking at the hole. <laughs> it's quite not funny though. <laughs> it's not comfortable at all. <laughs> But they had to check, they both were checking if the baby is not in the, any distress or anything. But they, they looked, one looked, another looked, and then there's another one, like not the doctor, but how it's called the... Um, she's not a doctor, but like that nurse? That nurse, nurse that uh, like uh, welcomes the baby. Yeah, and then the nurse came and she looked at me. And so there's like... Three people looking at your butthole in like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, like who are they just looking, you know? So uh, they decided that it's probably not like the main waters. It's the side waters, yes, like one of the side waters. Yes, that's I wanted to tell that. And they said, okay, so now we, we're going to put you in the birthing room. And uh, you're, you, in, and they were like, you're definitely going to birth today. And I'm like, good, awesome. <laughs> Good to hear that. Yeah, then uh, Greta told that I'm waiting outside. Oh yeah, I said that and then, my man is waiting. Then they like uh, show me where to go and uh, finally after like two, three hours of waiting outside, we like finally met uh, again. <laughs> after some time. So I like, quickly took uh, some like... Uh, so we had like three bags, I think, three or four bags ready for it. Yeah. And uh, Greta asked me to bring the, the main one for the birth. Yeah, I was prepared for the birth. There was like electrolyte drinks, some so, bars of food, like those granola bars. Yeah. For like, just in case I need them, because I... It was already a long process, you know? And so, you imagine you waking up at 3 in the morning and you... Up around 1 or 2 p.m., like middle of the day, and you cannot eat actually. Yeah, like I couldn't eat a main meal, you know, yeah. you can't eat some burgers. <laughs> and <laughs> there's still birth to come. Yeah. So, uh, so I yeah. think I had like one granola bar, but not much. I was trying to drink that uh, yeah, you uh, just drink electrolytes, some fluids. but also I couldn't drink much of it because it's kind of sweet. And I was like, nah, I need only water. So it, mainly I drink water. So that's good <laughs> that like I grab also like a whole two liter bottle of it so the doctor showed us a, a birding room and yeah, like uh, they left me there yeah they left you there and I quickly like uh, organized and put some of the stuff uh, that we planned with Greta in the like parent room our own private room yeah it's like a private room like I'm you going know, to the, post pictures the of room. all of the stuff so it's private for only fam family only yeah so. family room you know, the baby, the dad, and the mom, kind of. Because uh, the building part was in the another room. With all the wires, electrical stuff, and that's all. So, what's <laughs> next? So, basically, they attached me to that uh, machine where you can hear the heart of oh, the baby. Yeah. Are we going to post the picture yeah, of you yeah, there? sure, sure. That picture is insane. So, and, they and put, like, two things on the belly. One is tracking the the sound of baby's of her heart. heart and you can hear it out loud yeah. it literally just there like was like beeps. live sound and <laughs> there is a machine where i think it was off <laughs> yeah the machine i think was off but, but it, like, it made beeping sound like beep beep like kind of thing yeah every one minute i think it oh, beeped oh it was just on my nerves on that point i couldn't bear that so i was like can someone please just turn on that machine off but I think it went through the whole process. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Greta, like, continuously, 
uh, got uh, angrier, like more grumpy. And the, uh, the, like more grumpy. Like, oh. the machine checks the heartbeat if it's okay, and if it it's prints. not in distress, and it prints the whole like. Imagine history. like uh, before earthquake that uh, machine. That <laughs> yeah, so it there was like the same thing, but for the heart, and it printed. I don't know for like two hours I think yeah it was like not it was, like two hours but hour it for was, sure it was a long time yeah then yeah. they came back to check that paper if everything was okay yeah and then the doctor after I think few hours like two hours or so came to check how much I dilated and yet again it was kind of stuck at the same they checked before and uh, it was like four centimeters at the beginning yeah, and, it's stuck. and it was stuck at like four, maybe a little bit, but not much. So she's like, you know what, now on the contraction, I'm going to dilate you with my fingers. Yeah, so the doctor came in, waited for Greta's... Uh, to have pain, yeah. basically. And just put the fingers... And you know. just dilate it, like, you know, like yeah. with, it's not two hands, just like one hand, just like dilate it. And open it up. It doesn't hurt when she does it, it hurts just like the whole contraction like all like all of them pretty much so that didn't hurt the hurt it hurt the the whole you know feeling of my body just like and the entire time i'm just like he just sitting in the, in the corner, corner. <laughs> yeah funny but we were talking the whole time no 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 till, no, we, till some point no 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 at the beginning i was talking i was making jokes making her laugh and till then one minute till till they, she dilated me and the whole pain intensified to that level that I just didn't want to hear anything I didn't want to talk I didn't want to do anything yeah. just like be in my mind in peace <laughs> I was useless there she 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 said like sit in the corner and shut up yeah I okay. I mean I didn't mean to be angry but it was just like it was painful that much. And then I, I couldn't just, like, even touch it her. Oh, I remember the nurse, I think, came and she's like, you can rub her back or yeah, like yeah. Her, her, you know, lower back. And I was so like laughing her. inside, you know. And I was like, okay, you can try. <laughs> and he just touched, I think he touched me just a little bit. I was like, don't touch me ever. And <laughs> just like go off of me. Yeah. So I was like sitting in the corner on my phone for like hour and a half. Yeah. Then the doctor came back again, yeah. checked it, and, and it still wasn't enough. Yeah, it was like barely one centimeter. She dilated me to like five and a half, six yeah. ish, and it dilated maybe to seven ish, but yet again, she had to like do the finger stuff. Yeah, and we needed like at least 11 centimeters, right? No, no, 10 max. 10 max? Yeah, 10 max. So at least nine. You need only at least nine to like start the birthing process. So basically, she did it and she's like, are you comfortable to go to the bath? You know, there's a bath. Right. You can't... There's bugs. You can't birth in a bath, bath, at least in our hospital. But you can have like some moments there. So... Doctors recommended to go to the bath and uh, just take a shower handle and do circles around uh, Greta's belly. So I did that uh, for like an hour and a half. I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it was maximum hour and a half, not more, definitely. Not it was more. quite long because my both arms were tied after that because you have to do like this circle and uh, there was no space, you know, to like stand or, or sit. Yeah, he was kind of in awkward half, position, yeah. yeah. And I was just sitting in the bath and that, it was really helpful. Like, I think water birth would be so much, like, more easier and pain-free compared to, like, that you have to do on, on bed, the bed. Like, horizontally. Yeah, so it, it was really helpful to have that water. Hot bed, yeah. It was not hot, it was warm. You can't have hot because it puts in the stress, the baby. So it was warm. And it was really, really helpful. It soothes the whole pain. So from, like high pain it went to like medium pain let's say it was still painful though it yeah and then uh, that thing he opened up a bit more it went to nine yeah it went to nine i mean the, the doctor came again and she just yeah but she said spread it was a bit more better you know it was yeah but it, it it helped a lot 
Yeah, so they put me out of the bath. They said that I can't stay longer there. And she asked about the pain, all that kind of stuff. She checked me again and uh, she did the thing again <laughs> and it was at nine. She's like, that's good, but the baby is not in the right position. She's not in the cervix yet. She's like somewhere floating, you know? <laughs> so she needs to get there. Like she uh, kind of explained like, like a little ball, you know, going into, you know, she, she needed, a, I needed to make circular motions with my hips so she gets into the right position. Yeah, you know? because her, uh, the baby's head wasn't in the right direction to start the breathing process. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind so of like that. So, doctor, uh, bring a ball, like... Like a bouncing ball, yeah, you like know, the, the regular ball. gym ball, and Greta has to sit on it and, and just, just do circles. Yeah, circles. It was, so, I think, the worst. Yeah. From everything, like the the whole like uh, circle motions on the ball was the worst than maybe even the whole birthing process because it's painful but it's when you do the circles it's like I don't know having a knife in your belly just like all the time you know because I think she's getting into that position and it just like kind of you know dilates even more at that point so I and Ava was big like her head was big so I think also kind of you know yeah. meant something there was a she was a big baby and uh, the doors were small <laughs> yeah let's say that so basically and a lot of waters came out once yeah, i started you, doing a lot of waters came out then me. you lost a lot of waters yeah like <laughs> there was like i don't know like 10 15 towels to oh, like yeah. uh, everywhere around to, me on the bowl like below yeah, me to like clean it up a bit so i was non-stop taking new one and just cleaning everything yeah. so there was a lot of bloody and with pregnant water yeah it was like white-ish water and yeah. clear water and a little bit of blood as well and S most of the time she had the contract contractions uh she squeezed my hand <laughs> like, <laughs> multiple I don't times remember that. <laughs> like, i don't know if it helped it helped but also i made like the sound once i oh yeah the out. sound I made the sound like you know like the cows do yeah so it was pretty much it but it helped so much to go to breathe <laughs> out with the sound that sound was like, so weird it's like leaving the pain you know out of my body I mean it probably sounded bad and weird but for me it was helpful so much yeah I, I heard that sound for like three hours <laughs> probably yeah so we speaking around it was around eight by that time not eight uh, six yeah, I guess, yeah, around like six, six So yeah, something. imagine we came to the hospital around 10 and we did all this preparation till six-ish. Yeah, kind of. And then, what happened next? Then she, the doctor came, checked me again and she said that I'm ready, that it's, it's, it's time, you know. It's oh time yeah, to... the, she said that uh, when there will be a feeling that you want to poop, yeah, when you call when you, us. Yeah. And we did because it was. I was already feeling like it's time to push. Like yeah. your body just tells it's like time to naturally push. Naturally, that you want to like yeah. start pushing. Literally, yeah. And so uh, I was like, it's time. <laughs> it's time to do that. So I think you called the, the nurse or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I called it and uh, then uh, they came. There was like three or four women there. Three, I think. Three, three. of them. Mm -hmm. Three, and they asked if I'm going to like participate. Yeah, they asked in the you whole process <laughs> and then the doctor asked particularly if I'm going to be okay during the birth you know she like <laughs> he asked me twice I was like of course I, will I think be. a lot of men can handle it mentally that's why she asked because I think they saw a lot of men there yeah that just you know couldn't and I said okay yeah I will be and then she was like okay then you're going to work now <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like what so my job was to so Greta was in this crunchy position so they firstly they transformed from normal bed that you saw in the picture I was laying yeah they transformed like a completely in a different yeah they bed, took you know? some parts off they bring another one they connected okay so let's move on basically uh, yeah they transformed the bed they put me in 
and in this awkward position and you know they said that whenever there's a contraction you put the legs on the metal bars like on the right on the sides yeah, and you just the legs were like this in the air yeah and they and and the doctor said you push like there's no tomorrow you know and for me my job was to help uh, Greta like uh, hunch back yeah but the thing is that once I started pushing I didn't push enough like my pushing was not good enough so my was job to help her hunch back uh, and there was oxygen mask that Greta didn't even remember for like I don't know I asked about her after like one month if she remembers and she didn't yeah I didn't remember that he actually gave me the water or yeah and I gave water every every push so so she had to like push and there was one minute cooldown <laughs> you have to wait before another one yeah but it wasn't a minute it was pretty pretty fast you know like then it got faster it got okay. faster and faster but at the beginning there was quite some time between the pushes yeah it was i remember but the thing is at the very beginning i didn't push enough she said that okay your pushing is not good enough like you you have to improve you know <laughs> yeah and imagine you have to like hold with your hands and like uh oh yeah like my hands went to the same place where my legs were yes and you have to like pull with legs, uh, pull with the hands and push with legs. Yeah. So, <laughs> but like, yeah, she, she like, said, you have to push like that you could see the stars in your eyes, pretty much. Yeah, she said like this, exactly like this. And Greta was pushing her. But it was not good but enough. But it was not enough. She said like, push it. And then it was... No, no, she sit me in the in the chair. Oh yeah. In the chair, you know, like the old elder men and the and the and like <laughs> like elder people have to poop in those chairs. You know, like the chair with the hole in it, and it has like uh, now it buckets. gives me nightmares, you know. And I had to sit there, so it helps me. So I had to push there, and she's like, "You can push there. Baby's not gonna go out there. <laughs> There's impossible and stuff." And uh, this baby. She's, she wants to crawl on the on the on the grass though. She loves the grass for some point. And uh, I pushed on that chair. Lots of stuff came out. Yeah, there was blood. There was everything in yeah. that in that a bowl. Lot of, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't want to see normally. Yeah. And they imagine those like people that work there. They see that every single day. Yeah, because. Uh, when Greta was giving birth, there was uh, another woman giving birth, like, uh, at the next door uh, room, you know. And I remember Greta asked something to bring it from the family room. I don't remember what exactly it was, but... Yeah, and I'm, like, going from one room to another one. Oh, it was, I think, in the end, no? In the afterbirth. Oh, yeah, and I hear it... Uh, no. Yeah, 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 I birthed it. was it? Yeah, 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 it was after you... you... You came, you went for, uh, I don't know, something. Something, yeah. And I hear the other woman screaming in another room. And I hear the sound. Like, literally, Shush, you know? like, wet thing came out from the hole. It was that sound. like And I hear baby screaming. So, also I heard another woman giving birth. Uh, <laughs> and that sound was so weird, it's insane. So, coming back to our birth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was, yeah, I had to sit on that chair for a while, then uh, she went, put me back in the, in the bed again, and then the whole thing started, like the whole birthing, no, 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 the, the whole thing started like pushing and baby and, and Thomas doing stuff, you know, all that kind of thing. Yeah, and. And then, like, when real pushing started, I was, I don't know, at that moment I didn't think anything about me, it was all about Greta. And I was, like, already not tired, tired, but full of adrenaline. Exhausted, I guess. And, yeah, like, and exhausted, because it, like, not, it not was... physically, but mentally. Yes. Mentally and kind of uh, physically, because there was, like, 48 hours and I didn't sleep much, and I didn't eat pretty much all day anything as well in yeah. the hospital and all those nerves excitement adrenaline yeah. starts to like kick in really 
So about the pain during the birth, I don't remember any pain to be honest. Like during the birth, I think adrenaline kicks to that level that you don't feel the pain. Yes. Like, I wouldn't say physically, but like your body feels it, you know? Because I remember when I was pushing, I definitely screamed. Not intentionally, it just happened naturally. I was like, I wasn't like, you know, when people like screams, you know? It was more like out of pushing, you know? Like that thing happened out of pushing, like the, the screaming part, I would say. And uh, I couldn't hold it to myself. I couldn't just, you know, put my shut mouth and just do like, it. I you didn't scream much at the beginning, but like in the later stages, you started screaming at the end, then at the start of the push. But like it, it wasn't like that insane from, scream that you see in the movies. Yeah, it, it was wasn't more like from a, my throat. It was more from my belly. I would say the scream, like you know, from the throat. You like when from the scary movies people scream. You know, it's a different scream. It, it was different. Yeah. And I'm there like standing and watching from the side. Like, Greta was like this, imagine. And I stood here, like next to the, the legs. I saw everything you can see there, everything. And uh, so the like final birth started around seven. Pretty much like, yeah. So like it, when the the head went already like into the yeah into the parts you know when she started moving when the head started moving it was around seven so it was just moments of like you know a matter of time when the baby is actually gonna come out <laughs> so it's quite funny because uh, everything goes so slow so slow so slow and it gets faster 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 so from 10 in the morning to like six not many things happened but like at the final hour jesus christ it was so much yeah the final hour was stressful like yeah for both of us not for only women when they say like oh woman only like uh, gives birth no okay hello there shoes <laughs> when you when you give birth and if a man actually is at the birthing room men also like experience it maybe not the pain but it's different experience, but it's definitely stressful and yeah, it's different because you cannot do shit there. Yeah, you're really like You're so kind useless of ho here. hopeless, you know. Yeah. You can not You hopeless. can just stand and watch and do what doctor said, and if something happens, you cannot do anything actually. Yeah, you can't. You can't uh, take out the yeah. pain of me, or you can't do anything you just like that. Stood and watch. Yeah. So and you can definitely feel when the, you know, there's a calling ring of fire of once the birth happens oh. and it's when the head kind of goes through the cervix it's the ring of fire because it just gets through there and it's the most painful because you can feel that something kind of like gets your hips out from the position and so i don't know how to explain that but you can feel it it's not like more in a pain but it's more of like discomfort discomfort and weird feeling that your body dislocates you know i don't know what my baby doing but she just like explores the world so there was a a fluid connected to Greta's wrist I don't know how it's called oh that yeah fluid. they made uh, how it's called the, the mm, I think they put electrolytes in my body yeah there because was I needed electrolytes fluids. and vitamins that fluid that like recovers your starts little little helps to helps recover. to recover your body yeah, yeah because I needed energy from pushing and stuff. I was already drained. It was 16 hours yeah. constant of giving birth. Uh, and there was like a tube going from the wrist to that uh, pouch. Yeah, to the... To the... And uh, Greta had to push so hard that the, <laughs> not the fluid came back to the, like, to the wrist, but the blood go back in reverse yeah, to up, the, to the to, up to the pouch, yeah. So I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. She though. was pushing really hard. If uh, not like blood goes with the help of gravitation to her, yeah, it comes to, to her body, but comes out like up the stream, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that how much she has to push during the birth. I mean, now with the second child, for example, I would know how hard I would need to push. I would know how to push first of all 
because at first I, I never experienced any pushing, you know, like before yeah. like that. It's not like taking a poop. <laughs> uh, so she's giving birth and uh, I start seeing head coming from the hole. <laughs> I didn't see that. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, she see didn't, it. didn't she, she didn't saw it. But I was standing like next to it and imagine it just goes like boop and you see the head. Oh, like, and like, I, like like a yeah. plug stuck to it, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my goodness, but the thing this is a child." Is, it didn't just went through. I had to get that episiotomy. They cut me. Yeah, but they, because uh, she was started pushing, and I saw that uh, the head didn't go like, didn't move at all. Yeah, it was just not going through because, and the, it was too small. Yeah, like the hole, it was too small, and I saw it that. Uh, the baby's head uh, started like uh, deforming. It, I mean, it deforms for all of the babies. It, yeah, it deforms uh, anyway. That's but, why uh, they have like the holes when they, like, after birth, every baby's head has two holes in the back and in and the top of the head, because the baby's head has to move once birthing. Yeah. So I was, I saw that head, and the more she pushed, the more that head started deforming. And it's scary. And the doctor said, you know, if we don't cut you, you're gonna rip. And if you rip, you can rip in a bad places. You can rip to your um, anus, <laughs> to, to your back. You know, pretty much to the whole uh, inside. You know, not only like outside. You can rip inside, and like it the would guts. be yeah into the guts, and it would be like hard to heal and all that kind of stuff. Because I was against actually episiotomy. I was like, I don't need to be cut. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't want to like be cut with the scissors. Yeah, because I saw that it's like you get a, a little uh, scar, a little like harsh scar, and uh, you can sit, and it's uh, unlikely that you're gonna rip and stuff. But all that information didn't apply to me. I needed to be cut because she was extremely big compared to like me. And we're talking right now like slowly in, in peace but at that moment imagine that child is coming out and you don't have much time yeah you have to do it quick yeah you have to do it quick and Greta is tearing apart and uh, the doctor asked if she wanted to be cut Greta didn't want to at the beginning but then doctor the doctor explained me that said that it, you need to be cut because otherwise it could be dangerous to the baby yeah so basically, I was like, "Yeah, do whatever. Just get that baby out of me." <laughs> and I, I, and I see the doctor coming out with a huge scissors. Yeah, it was huge actually. The scissors like this big. Yeah, like like I don't know what you have to cut with that. And Scary. then uh, they waited for another uh, push. Push. Yes. Yeah, for another contraction again. And because I push only on the contraction. Then uh, doctors. Did they put like any medication? Like no, no, no. It was. They just cut. It just took the scissors and it cut you, like without any. Like they didn't any, put any, any. Nothing. There was nothing in it. Okay. And I was surprised. Like, I see those huge scissors, and imagine getting cut under. I didn't feel it. I was not like, a, oh bit. my goodness, it's going to be so painful. I didn't feel anything. Yeah, I was surprised because how you cannot feel it anything. No, I didn't feel a single thing actually. I didn't even feel when she cut it. I didn't know when uh, she, like I didn't know when she cut sure it. I'm pretty sure she cut it when you pushed. Probably, probably maybe it's so, easier, you know. Yeah, maybe it's easier. Maybe you do not do not feel it and then maybe, you pushed yeah. and just and yeah. she cut. My cut is like pretty in two big directions, though. right? Yeah. So she the doctor cut. I think Imagine <laughs> the Zussi going this <laughs> and they had to cut this side and in the bottom. They don't cut straight. They cut a little bit to the side because if they do straight, it goes to your guts, you know, into oh, yeah. your guts thing. So that's why they don't cut straight. That's that's how you rip most of the part. That's why they cut you yeah, know, on you the side. Yeah, you ripped on like in the bottom. I, and I think I ripped a little bit. That's why she cut. I think she cut only once, but I ripped a little bit. I think that's what happened. Like yeah, and stuff. then she pushed a couple more times and uh, the head go through. Yeah. 
And I think after she cut, like the baby just like went out pretty easily compared to like before. Uh, so I saw the head, but the head uh, came down. So I, w I was standing up, and I saw the head uh, coming, but like she was like face down. So I didn't saw the face at the beginning. And yeah, she wasn't like going, looking at the sky. You know, she was looking yeah. at the well. The thing the is, that when the baby goes, it doesn't go straight. It goes in a circular motion. Yeah, yeah. So, so I didn't, why. I didn't saw it. Because you know, when the baby is going um, down, the baby's back is on the belly, always, most of the time, unless there's something wrong. Yes. Then the the baby is facing. So she started like this, and she went like. So the whole circle, like she did the whole 360 there to get out. Yay! 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 And when there was uh, pretty much when I saw a head, I started like crying. Oh yeah, I think I cried too. Like I, actually, I cried after I saw the baby. Yeah, you cried after, but, but I cried a bit before. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. Because it was so stressful. I don't know. Well, I didn't see that because I didn't see anything actually. <laughs> there until it, until the baby came out, I didn't see a thing. It's quite emotional experience. Yeah, I didn't like. I know why I cried. Actually. I think it's just emotions, no? Yeah, I think it's just emotions. Yeah, you just cannot control, control it anymore. It. No, no. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't control emotions, but back then. Man, you know, it's, it's different. It's different I think experience. It's, different. it's not like uh, emotions from, I don't know, from cutting a finger. Yeah, I think it's just pure stress, adrenaline, and yeah. and happiness, I, I, I would yeah. say. So I think after she cut me, after a couple of pushes, the baby just came out. Yeah, I, I don't just know the exactly, baby just but... came out, and uh, <sighs> man, I'm getting exhausted by talking about this. Once the baby was out, they put the baby on me, yes. and it was such a relief. Like all the pain is gone. I had no pain anymore, completely. It was just like you know, like they, you know, took it out. Greta was like, out. after the birth, she was like, I don't know how she felt around three in the morning. She was like, I was oh. calm. Yeah, she was, was calm. calm. Talking. I mean, it's a relief to have all that pain out because the last pain at 10 centimeters dilated is the worst. But it's not unbearable. You know, when, when people say, oh, I couldn't handle, you can handle. That's your body pretty much made for it. So <laughs> you can handle. It's painful, but you can handle. And uh, once the baby's out, when they put, once they put on, the, on, on, on your you, chest, yeah. Everything's gone. You forget everything that happened. You're happy. You have baby. You know, did you have this little baby? Yeah. <laughs> this little baby. And they put this little. It doesn't look like human at the beginning. At the yeah. first. <laughs> it doesn't the, look those like eyes are just black. Black. Like just full black. black. Little alien. That's what it looks like in the beginning. It's not human. It's just little alien. It looks like with those eyes. I think we're going to put in the video how she looked at the beginning. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, once once you have the baby, so the let me hold her for quite some time i don't really know how long it was five minutes maybe yeah, something like that and then they took her oh they didn't took her <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no 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 to, to cut the thingy <laughs> so the umbilical cord. doctors let uh, the baby to let it come down just relax adapt a bit and they clamped the thingy yeah and they clamped the the feeding cord how it's called and uh they waited for that cord to dry up. Yeah, to stop pulsing. Stop like, pulsing, yeah. Stop, you know, get the blood. So I think it's been 10, 15 minutes. Around it something. Was... Okay. Or maybe stuck. Are you stuck, Mama? And then uh, I had to cut that. I had to cut it <laughs> with those, yeah, with, with those huge <laughs> <The same> scissors. <laughs> I, 
I was think it the, the same? Yeah, I think the same, but like... Uh, I think they were cleaned before. Oh yeah, it's probably maybe different ones just looking Yeah, the but same. like <laughs> still huge. And you think that, that that cord is like soft, squishy. No, it's like... It's like a branch. You need like good force to cut it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. really, I always thought that it's like, like a gut, you know, like a it's, skin. No, no, it's not soft. It's like, like this bumpy, like little stick, you know, you have to cut. <laughs> like finger thick gummy bear, you have to cut it. <laughs> so yeah, I cut the, the, the cord. And to cut it, I had to stand in front of Greta. Yeah, he had to go all the way from my side. To the back of me yes and, so and cut it. Greta was like sitting like this you know with legs spread <laughs> blood everywhere and I had to cut it and I saw everything I saw the, the traumatizing <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't see <laughs> yeah, yeah it, I know it didn't look bad but like it just weird looking at the hole with the cord coming out. <laughs> yeah, because you see that white cord coming. It was white? Yeah, it was white. Okay. Like white gummy bear, like <laughs> thick and this long, you know. And after I cut it, I saw that like the blood, the... the how it's called? The, where the she was cut, cut the yes. Here. Yeah, the view wasn't like the best, that's for sure. Uh, but then after I cut the cord, the doctors took the baby, uh, they had to like uh, weigh it, it clean it up, uh, yeah, measure the, it a bit. All the stuff. <laughs> and the thing the doctor did, you remember, with the elbow? Oh yeah, she said, I'm gonna push your belly a little, a little. And the, after the birth, the belly is still the same size, it's but still humongous. she took out the thingy out of me, the placenta. Yeah, the placenta. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I so just, I don't know, I really thought she just like, I don't know, like use the umbilical cord, cord end to just like take it out. At least it felt for me like this, like she just like wiggled and it just plopped out. That's how I felt. No, no, no. He said that she put the whole hand in it yeah, and she, just took it out. She put the whole hand, imagine, the back whole hand the to fit it in, back to the, to the belly, you know. Yeah, into the She uterus. put the hand, scanned a bit. <laughs> Grabbed it and, uh, and took out. I'm not kidding. It was like two hand a size bag. bag full of blood. So it's yeah, it was placenta. And I saw like hmm? doctor took it out, big bag of blood. I think she just looked around. I saw how she looked around. Yeah, a she just bit. doctor just looked if it's around. In a whole piece. You yeah. Know? It was like okay, everything boop, <laughs> to the dumpster. Yeah, and it didn't feel much, and then she's like, oh, I'm gonna push your belly a little. A little. It wasn't a little. She literally put her whole weight with an elbow on my belly to put everything out, what's what's left in my belly, though. Yep. Imagine, just you lay down and other person comes with the elbow and just yeah. squishes it on your painful, belly. It was just uncomfortable. I was not prepared to have that much force on my belly. She said yep. a little. But it was like whole body, her, her whole body like put on... on like her. a horse stepping on your belly. Yeah, pretty much. She's climbing into the stroller. Ava. My this little bamboozle. <laughs> I know so, that. Ava was born at 7.15. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. From like 3 in the morning to 7-ish. That's how long it took for the entire birth process. Literally, I, I kind of calculated it was 16 hours. 16 hours. Whole, 16 hours for whole process. 16 hours of constant work. <laughs> yeah. We went to the room, to the, to the family room, just to relax First, a bit. I think they let you out because we needed food. Oh yeah, I went to the... So they like, they, they said go, go away till the like visiting hours are so... Till they lock the doors, because they lock the doors for the night. So yeah, so the birth ended at 7.15, but they were still like... Uh, we waited for some time for the for, court, for everything. Yeah. So it was past Seven, 8. Yeah, it was past, yeah eight. past 8. And I rushed go back home to take his dog out, uh, to take... Dogs, dogs out, out. Yeah. 
so they can do their stuff and they, and I rushed back to the you went to the I went store. to the store to get some food because we were starving yeah. I didn't and eat it for a whole day she couldn't eat for a whole day and we needed like yeah. some At energy something and uh, at 9 they locked the doors so he had to be quick and come back before 9 o'clock in the evening yeah so I think I bought a couple of yogurts like uh, some yes. donuts yeah, some they, like just quick add, easy like, food you yeah, know and like a couple some energy fruits as well. yeah so uh, while you were out I was still laying I had to wait for like the fluids go into mm -hmm. into my hand to, to recover they, a bit. after they like uh, dress the baby and everything they put next to me so the baby can start breastfeeding <laughs> look at this little monster she's gonna start start playing this oh no 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 Okay, um, she found she found it yeah so I came back and I was like all the time I was away I was thinking about it like oh, trying to be how, yet how imagine you just imagine you just did uh, everything uh, at the birth and you just going back like to your normal life you know <laughs> yeah, to, like to the world yeah to the world I was still like full of adrenaline I was doing everything as fast as I could I came back and you were still... Uh, I was laying in the bed, in the same birthing room. In the same room. birthing room, yeah. Yeah, I was and laying with the baby next to me, just trying to breastfeed. And then we went to the family room just to like chill yeah. a bit, to they eat. They put me in, a, in the wheelchair because yeah. I couldn't walk. They don't let you walk even though you feel good enough to walk. I mean, you couldn't walk, you you just yeah, they, teared apart. <laughs> They grabbed the baby, one nurse grabbed the baby, she didn't let me hold it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to, you know, have her because I was literally no energy. I was afraid I'm gonna drop her. So she's like, can I, can I get to the room? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and, uh, like, after the baby was born, I was, like, so much thinking about, uh, oh my god, I cannot speak anymore. I was like following baby with my eyes everywhere. Oh, she so you were tracking. The yeah, baby because everywhere. you like you couldn't do much. You were you on the bed. Yeah. And I was like looking at the baby, where it's going, you know, to like. Yeah, what what the nurses do and all. I that couldn't let stuff. it out of like from my view. Yeah. And for me, it was a whole different experience to process in my head after she was born. First off, I didn't have any energy even to stand up. Once I stood up, my my body felt like shivering like yeah. i was shivering i felt like everything like my legs are like this even though they were probably standing still i, I felt like this i was afraid to take the baby on my hand, hands because i was so exhausted that i was afraid that i'm gonna drop her you know so so it's around like nine past nine yeah uh and then uh, they just give the baby to you and so say yeah. good luck. Yeah, you, like, you are the fathers, you know. <laughs> it's time for you. It's now time to shine. You, yeah. And uh, the big problem was the milk. Yeah, the thing is, at the very beginning, you shouldn't have milk immediately. It's colostrum that goes out, the yellow gold liquid, and. Uh, and we thought that uh, she's sucking. Go <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That she's sucking on the on the boob and she's yeah. eating, but she wasn't. She, she wasn't. was just empty sucking, you know. And Probably the colostrum would have came out, but the thing is, I didn't know how to latch her on me. First of all, I didn't know how to make her, you know, latch on my breast, and uh, she latched really wrong, and my. Your, nip, your nipples yeah my nipples were she's tired my nipples were to the point where it's bleeding your nipples look like a screwdriver <laughs> literally it i looked, mean she... it's it's split it into four yeah. after they... a couple of days of, of feeding <laughs> yeah. wrongly they they didn't show you first of all they don't tell you anything how to breastfeed unless you go to like some lessons 
and they don't really show you any any you know tips and tricks they give you a book and in the book there's like black some sort of black uh, uh, pictures where you can barely see how to do and how you can learn from the book like how to latch a baby they don't show you the boob or anything it's um yeah and, and it was so painful they don't have teeth but like their gums are so uh solid you know they're so hard that you know they have like really simple sucking mechanism in their in their mouth like the way they do it but if they do only the end of your nippy. breast yep. like the end of the breast only on your nippy it's it's really wrong because they have to like latch the hole, you know, like they have After to. After a couple hole, of days, like yeah. there was blood coming out. Yeah. So that's why I was really afraid like to, to, to give her because it's not good to give just like a newborn, you know, to give, <laughs> to give blood with, with the milk. It's yeah, not Yeah, but really it was good. like a couple of days later. Yeah. But at first night, we just became parents. We don't know anything. Yeah. Because what we read, what we just googled, everything just went up. Yeah. Nothing empty. You know, the things you read, it's not comparable to reality. It's not how it works, pretty much. It's it's so fun on the papers till you experience it. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, Greta, the first night was nightmare. It was nightmare. I mean, the first night was not nightmare. It's, it was fine. From 26th to 27th it was quite okay we slept a little bit yeah, I, we slept because uh, you know we was were sleeping s yeah she was sleeping after birth you know she needed to rest because she experienced the same thing we did but I mean. both of us we were so tired we like uh, we took a shift when like who was going to sleep when yeah because we didn't want to sleep both at the same time because we were scared that the baby is going to like uh, choke or just not going to breathe and or we won't hear it because we were so tired yeah so uh, we slept in the in the, in the shifts basically in the shifts. yeah like one few hours one few hours another one kind of and thing and the first time the first night was hard but we slept a couple hours yeah and the baby slept so you know it but was not that hard the second one it was a nightmare the second one was terrible. Because baby was hungry, hungry, really hungry, and there was no milk in the, in the booba. Yep. And we didn't know that there was no milk, and we didn't know where the problem, because we changed the diapers often. We did everything we could, but the baby was still screaming hard. Yep. And just like, it was second night, like two in the night, yeah, at like at, at, at like two, two a.m. in the morning. Yeah, you we know, just pretty much. didn't know what else what we can do, so we ask uh, just call the the nurse. Yeah, emergency button to nurse to get a nurse. The the doctor came and Good she perfect. asked uh, how was the feeding, you know, and we thought it's going it, it went well, but it yeah, didn't. we thought it was good and all. And uh, they mixed up. Uh, the, the baby formula, the baby basically, formula. because uh, I told that like it's probably not coming out and everything, and like I was desperate, and they were like, "She's probably hungry, you know, if if that's the problem." And I'm like, "Yeah, so what do I do?" And they're like, "We can give baby formula," and I was really against it. I felt so guilty, but I wanted my baby to be fed. I wanted to stop her crying because it's obviously not good to let baby cry constantly. Once once you like soothe her, you do everything, and she's still crying. And I was like, okay, let's just give formula at least a little bit so she gets a little bit of the milk and she's full, you know? Yeah, so we so did a couple of times, I guess. We did formula. for like two and a half days formula only because there was... Yeah, it was until I healed a little bit and it was not blood coming out. It healed pretty fast. I used the patches on the nipples to, yeah. to help to heal. And it helped healing after like an hour, an hour, and a day and a half, I think. So we had to use the formula. It's it's not really good for like newborn to get formula yeah, but immediately. There was but literally no milk. But I couldn't do anything else. We tried to collect it like in all ways possible yeah. from the nipple. They're like, oh, just you know, squeeze it, collect it, and it's just not coming out. And I like, I showed the nurse how it's coming we out. Co we collected like three drops. 
Yeah. In like and one she's hour. like, that's not how it's supposed to be. And I'm like, what? Uh, what should I do then? Like, you know, like, and that nurse was not the most friendliest, let's yeah, say. Yeah, that nurse was, she was the worst. Yeah, she was like acting like um, literally the worst mom in the world. It's already stressful and she's giving you a hard time as well. Yeah, because Greta, in the first three days, she was, I don't, I don't know if you were scared of the baby. I don't know what's happening after birth. It's but, everyone's different. I was scared of myself to not to drop her. That's the main thing. I yeah. was afraid I'm gonna. She's fragile once she's born. So I was afraid she's gonna. I don't know, fall out of my hands because I felt so exhausted. Exhausted. Uh, no energy. I felt like I'm weak. You know. So yeah, for the first three or four days yeah pretty much i took care the, of the baby yeah i did hospital? pretty much everything yeah. in the hospital yeah like dressing changing diapers and it everything. was scary because that baby it's, it's, it, it looks like it's going to broke yeah it's like it's break yeah it's it's like <laughs> very fragile it's very human small, being yeah. it's, it's like not like now it's like this now big. she's like a little terminator a mom a mom Mom, 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 who could use? Sick dad. Mom, 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 yeah, so I was pretty much kind of afraid of of, of dropping the baby, of, of, I don't know, hurting her, like, in a way. I, I don't know what happened there. I guess it's just also, like, postpartum brain Yeah, and, and as well. couldn't even stand up without helping me. Yeah, I was really weak, like, 16 hours out of... It drains you, you know, all that stuff drains you a lot. So, <laughs> the funny thing that uh, we spent... Uh, from Tuesday up to Saturday in the hospital. Yeah. Till Saturday, mm. I don't know, 11 ish. Yeah, till like midday. Yeah, midday pretty so, much. So, after like night, two knife shifts, you know, like world pregnancy stuff, giving birth yeah. stuff, and uh, all those nights in the on the hospital, we slept <laughs> like. You little. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, GG's. So, in like five days, five nights, we slept, I don't know, maybe 15 hours in total. Yeah, like so we barely. Were, we were running on fumes, literally. Yeah. I don't know how we like did everything. I don't know. It's, it's crazy, actually, because we were so tired, we couldn't sleep. Yeah. Pretty much, you can't sleep because baby starts crying every like three hours and yeah and you have to do all this stuff you have to prepare oh man it was not easy no it, it was a lot at one point i was sleeping to the point where the baby was literally screaming right next to my ear and yeah I so the baby was like sleeping next to it uh, with the greta <laughs> on the same bed and uh the i was like chilling in my phone and the baby started screaming but I couldn't see it because my bed was like almost on the floor. Yeah, like next to it, but like... Yeah, and I thought uh, Greta saw it, that the baby screaming, but like it... After like one minute, I was like, why no one is moving, you know? <laughs> and I saw that Greta is sleeping next to the screaming baby. Yeah. So she was I that hear. tired. And I remember I woke up and Thomas was changing diaper on the changing table and I was like... How, how did, did that you, happen? Yeah, how, 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 what happened, you know? And he was like, you know, baby was screaming the whole time till I changed the diaper. And I was like, there, there's no way, like, how did I not hear that the baby was screaming, you know? Yeah. It was just like mind blowing. Because it was not possible to sleep pretty much from any of us. Because yeah. uh, if you wanted to go to the toilet or you, if the baby needs changing and yeah. he needs to, and she needed to be changed like every 30 to hour. Yeah. It was very often and uh, and every time I had to like go up and even to help you to go to the bathroom I yeah, had to like I wake up and and help you. I couldn't like uh, sit up because I had stitches and my cuts 
down there was pretty big like it was pretty much this big like four centimeters i think like even to even to change uh, sides because yeah, like we had to, to rotate the baby <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. oh, wow. we have to rotate the baby every three hours because uh, of her head yeah like to, like to be in shape but yet again there i think there was misinformation i talked with like my friend that has a child too and she said like for her the doctor said to change baby's side every day not every time she sleeps or every time she like you know but we changed it like every but three we hours just, like, changed every every nap every nap she took we changed the sides for her and you had to change as well because uh, and yeah i need to change from because, my because uh, you have you had to feed like in the later days yeah and she couldn't like move without helping me literally yeah i needed because you know those stitches they it seems like it's ripping apart once you move so it's uh, it's a lot to process and you can't do it alone <laughs> like i don't know maybe it's because my cut was deep like it was a lot probably that's why because anything else i was completely fine you know except the the stitches the stitches were the worst like terrible and once i needed to move even to go to the bathroom it was i needed help to get out of the yeah. bed to even get to the bathroom at some the, point the like entire hospital the, the rooms were like mediocre like it was clean it was good but not like it was not five modern. star hotel yeah. no it, was it wasn't not a hotel. really modern but yeah it did the job yeah as far as, as it did the job i mean I'm, the, my bed your bed was terrible my bed was terrible it like just it like it felt like i was sleeping on the wooden floor yeah <laughs> and like i had to pay 15 euros a night and no no in total yeah. i paid total. 15 for one 50 for but not 15 50 yeah so it was 15 per night right something like that 12 something maybe 13 yeah, yeah a night and uh, they didn't give me uh, breakfast or anything. It yeah, no food, nothing, just bed. Yeah, Basically, just, bed. just because he slept there. Really shitty bed, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know why father has to pay it for the bed. Just yeah, to I don't be, understand. Just to be in the just hospital. Just to be in the hospital, you have to pay it. So uh, Maybe because you use bathrooms? <laughs> man, <laughs> not really as well, because I went to home uh, yeah, all like a uh, couple time. times per day yeah. just to check on the dogs. Yeah. And to get us food, food and, everything. and everything. Because, because hospital food, hospital it's terrible. Hospital food was terrible as well. So for every time I had to either make it or just yeah. get from the restaurant. So basically for the breastfed mom, they bring food that literally... Onions. Yeah, the, the, the food that literally, uh, you know, how it's called, like bloats you. Yeah. And bloats the baby's belly. And it hurts for the baby because they don't know how to get out the gas and stuff like beans onions and beans onions and shitty you know sour milk and, and all that kind of stuff like it's it's just weird i don't know for me it was weird that they bring stuff like that it's definitely not made for i think it's just like in general in general they hospital make everything food. every food like every meal for everyone they say yeah pretty much so food was terrible my bed the, was fine. The I mean, nurses did were stuff. okay, except one. Except one, yeah. That one was very old school hag, I would say. Yeah. She was not friendly. She tried to make kind of fun of us, maybe because we were not married or like something yeah. like that. You know, some people have mixed opinions. And so for me, as a postpartum, you know, brains already like messed up. And that nurse comes in and just makes you feel even worse mom and stuff yeah and Greta, because Greta was feeling bad about I, herself yeah, for I was the first couple of days feeling like you already think if you're doing everything good for your baby because you wouldn't want what's best for for your baby and then there's nurse coming and trying to kind of shame you that you can't breastfeed or like do you have no milk or you don't know how to put the baby on the you know breast. yeah because she was the freaking nurse came and you have to go like this like this like this like it was so uncomfortable for the baby and for me to hold it. it yeah, was, she Jesus showed Christ. how to hold on her, uh, how she holds it, and it was not good for, for example, because for I have Thomas long because arms and it was different. literally impossible to hold it that and way. And he's that she like, showed. and she's like, oh my god, the baby's legs gonna turn blue if you're gonna hold like this. Oh my god, you're gonna, you yeah, know, drop it, and drop that it and that. or it's not good for the back, you know, whatever. And 
none of the nurses been like this except, except that one and she was the one on that night that we needed formula you yeah, know that we needed so it like the, the most worst. help from the from the hospital yeah and it was the worst for me i mean i already felt like i'm not good enough because i can't breastfeed her properly and then there's nurse coming kind of shame you it's even worse on mental health it's it's really bad though doing having experience like this but we went past it it's fine <laughs> you know it's just like i know how i would do now once i experience everything like that i know that next time even though it wouldn't be easy i know what to do in some points <laughs> yeah. you know and the, the thing that uh, in the morning i was uh, coming with the bags warm more bags from the car oh, yeah. for the clothes for the baby clothes our clothes stuff and yeah the, and there was a mother with a like midway let's say i think in the, in uh, the i i mean she already i know that she already had three kids because she was talking on the phone, on the phone with yeah. the, the husband and she was like almost laughing at me because i i was coming with like three bags you know the, <laughs> and she was like pretty much with nothing on it like I mean, Just little backpack. Once you know what to bring, you don't bring that much. I remember yeah. I brought definitely too much of stuff. Yeah, we <laughs> we went like on the, on the holidays. <laughs> but the thing is, with we luggage. didn't. For example, now I would dress my baby a little bit differently because we used hospital um, clothes for the first day. Yeah, they just gave it then i know what i would pack for myself more i ne i definitely needed more pads and stuff because i was bleeding a lot and a mess down there and i was prepared only a little bit i would say and for the men you pretty much don't need anything except slippers yeah because i mean i came home every day like two times so I, I could do everything yeah. there i mean we live pretty close you can literally yeah. walk from the hospital to home so for men it's not, you don't maybe need maybe inflatable mattress for the next time <laughs> yeah no that's a good idea yeah, actually because that one was bad so yeah and for the men listening if any of them i think uh, every man should go to the bird to like, experience it right it's a must it's not like uh, an option you have to go because i think m some men once they don't really participate in it they don't they, understand yes. the what woman has to go through and they think that they birth like pooping you know like you just poop the baby and you can do whatever and you know afterwards i don't know what you could have done there if you were like if i would be alone there. yeah it would be definitely like, like it's a nightmare. not even possible to like move you you couldn't even go to the bathroom yeah i mean so I for the know. man who doesn't want to go man you should really think about it I guess nurses help. You just press the button, nurses come, I mean, helps it's, it's you. It's still not easy. But once you have your your human next to you, you know. I mean, you have your person, your husband, you have your man. So yeah, you have a person you can rely on on him. You know him like your your, your like the back of your hand, you know. So it's definitely easier, and you know that you can ask and you can talk about things you wouldn't talk with the nurse, you know. I think that's why, because you know, you won't see, you won't say like about down there something, or like about you're not gonna show your breasts to the nurse how it looks and everything. Yeah, but, it, just, it just helps in general. Oh, what helped me a lot with breastfeeding, the uh, how it's called, like the the breastfeeding practitioner, like lactation consultant. I guess that's how it's called like a woman that helps you to latch the baby she shows you and i remember she, it was free she came at and friday at friday yeah pretty and much the baby was born at tuesday yeah but so without that, her i think i would have to i don't know go on my own somewhere to find someone who would help me because yeah. else i would be really in, so a, in pain by friday those nipples were <laughs> dead yeah but once she helped it was so different i mean it was still painful because it was already hurt like the nipples were yeah. bleeding already but once she showed me how like everything works and how you put the baby you literally put the baby you don't let her do it herself you, you put the baby on the breast so once she showed me how to do it it was a completely different experience and i knew that i'm gonna go everything through to breastfeed myself 
I was ready to go whatever I needed through because I wanted to breastfeed. I wanted to, you know, have this experience naturally, just like the birth. Uh, and then, then we came back to the home at uh, Saturday. Saturday, like midday. Midday. And we made zeppelins in the home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm surprised I had energy for it. The first day at back at home, we made freaking zeppelins. Yeah. And we ate like kings. Yeah. It was so good because, and it, uh, at home, it was so different. Yeah. You just chill. I don't know. You just know what to do at home. It's different, definitely it's different so much than the hospital. At home than, than I think the hospital. because you feel safe at home, yeah. you feel like home. I think that's why. So yeah, I think I think uh, we're gonna leave it here there. Yeah, because it's already one hour and forty minutes. <laughs> Nearly two hours Nearly actually. Nearly two hours. So yeah, oh my and goodness. Ava needs to sleep at seven thirty p.m. And I PM. need to do a, a good run. And Ava is about to have a sleep time, so I mean... Let's go home? We, we've been talking a lot, but yeah, we're gonna end it here and the next video is about postpartum first three months, I guess. Like yep. how we dealt with three months, for, for the whole three months with the baby. We're gonna start from the very, this moment when we back home and how everything went and what we've been through. I have a lot to say, I'm gonna definitely make some points in my phone okay. so i don't remember don't forget anything because i know that it's definitely different than for you on that point but yeah oh yeah for, for me i know it, it at the beginning it's hard to like uh, it, it's hard for you to like change your habits at the, at the beginning yeah because you have like nine months and to prepare my brains to prepare yeah. It like, comes a bit more natural. Yeah, the body for knows man, what to a, do. It's a big shift. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about that. It's a lot and <sighs> a lot for relationship to handle as well. It's a lot. It's oh, yeah. not easy. Nowhere. I don't know how people fix uh, their relationship with babies yeah. because I think it breaks relationships faster than fixing. Yeah. If you think that baby is going to like strengthen your relationship, no. Nope. That's not gonna happen. It's gonna challenge your relationship like hell. For women, it's crazy what you go through. I mean, men probably would never think of because they don't experience that. They, it's definitely different, you know. It's, and I understand how they can't understand that because it's, it's different. It's just, it's yeah, just it's different overall. Like after you came back to the home after the hospital, not many ch things th changes just you have another human and yeah. and that human needs mom yeah a lot a, a lot and the father you pretty much just clean home get some food make some food yeah. and uh, help mom help mom a little bit that's it and that's it. everything yeah. else is on mama she just yeah. because i don't have booba with milk <laughs> so yeah pretty much next time there's a lot to talk about again so this video is gonna be a, a, like was long for sure, yep. and uh, the next one Wait, I need my is, phone. is going to be as well. Next one is about first three months postpartum. So bye till next time, and subscribe for more.